what are the general problems or mistakes that you see people do in their uh, preparation so uh, as you mentioned that uh, this is this can be your general level of plan right so uh, where where do you where do you think that a mentor based sort of preparation right like as a mentor when you uh, help guide a lot of mentees under you where 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 do you help them and how what are the general problems or mistakes that you see people do in their uh, preparation uh so it's a talk about the mistakes uh, one mistake that is there is like uh, there are some banks of people who try to stay in their comfort zone so for example if they are able to solve the easy problems uh, they will keep on solving the easy problems and if they are stuck on the medium problems they will not try many medium problems so if they have targeted five problems a day they will solve maybe four easy and then one medium but hmm. that's uh, I would I would say that is that can be approached for the beginning when you are completely new to the DSA in order to build interest that was solving only the easy problems. But uh, as if you have to improve in this, you should uh, tackle the uh, medium problems also. And basically, any problem that is making you uncomfortable. So hmm. when you are solving that problem, you will you will feel uncomfortable. But that is definitely okay. You look at the solution maybe you try for that for half an hour and if you are not able to get to the solution you simply look at it and don't just memorize that solution and mm. uh, uh, and basically like to try to understand uh, how can we uh, so what is the gap between what i was thinking and how this solution is this? so that is one thing that you should try to do uh, mm that will reduce the un uncomfortableness that you are getting uh, in those topics or the difficulty levels so that is one mistake and the other mistake is uh, uh, other mistake is like i said uh, it's about memorizing so many people think that uh, i need to go to the lead code and solve thousand problems and uh, memorize all of them and if one of them comes in the interview then i'm good otherwise in Google, what happens is that uh, it is very possible that you, you will see a problem that you have not seen earlier. It is like highly probable, at least in the Google, I can guarantee that, that you mm. will face one such round in which you will see a problem that you have definitely you know, seen before. So uh, basically, at that time, what happens is that whatever is there, your analytical and problem solving ability, that only comes to the picture. So. Mm. Oh, so that is the thing instead of memorizing the uh, those solution try to think like how can we get to those solution you know here comes the part of the mentor so basically question is there solution is there now uh, a mentor can help a mentee to understand that okay uh, this solution is there but uh, this solution uh, has been thought using this mindset so uh, for example if you are thinking like uh, uh, so basically, maybe you are able to build a solution in which the time complexity was order n square, and the optimal solution has the time complexity of order n. So the mentor can try to help the mentee that okay, uh, in your approach, these were the things that you were doing unnecessary. Instead of that, you might have done this this way. Uh, you might have thought to uh, reduce these things, and that might have led to think to towards this optimal solution. Hmm. So, so that will this will help in two ways. First of all, uh, the the mentee will get a better understanding of that uh, solution, the problem. He will not have to memorize it. And the second thing is, it is more probable that uh, he will be able to identify the pattern in next ten problems like that. So mm. that problem is not asked, but a similar to that problem is asked in the interview. It is highly probable that he will be able to do that very easily because he has not memorized the solution, but identified some kind of pattern in that so that is the second mistake and the third mistake uh, is definitely not trying hard so basically i have seen uh, many kind of mentors uh, i mean uh, i can't blame all of them because some of them uh, work in a job where they have to devote a lot of time to their uh, organization so i mean i can't simply blame them but the thing is the amount of time and effort you are putting towards dsa because the thing is that uh, 
uh, other things, for example, uh, Hoops concept, uh, operating system, and all those things. These are hmm. some things that uh, you can prepare in one day. So hmm. there is a list of questions of uh, related to the operating system. You can go on and learn those questions in one hour or two hours, and you are good to go for any interview related to the operating hmm. system. But in the DSA, the only thing is the, how much practice you have done. So if you have hmm. done one year of practice, that will highly increase your chance. If you have done only one week of practice, that will lower your chances. So in the end, it all boils down to how much time and effort you are going to give to this. So it is not a mistake. It, it might be a kind of like a foundation for some of the people that they are not able to devote much time. But mm. they should try to devote as much time as possible for uh, solving questions on unit code or maybe history somewhere. So these are mm. the general mistakes that I see in the mentee. And mentors can definitely, one of the things that mentor can do apart from giving the technical knowledge is to always motivate their uh, mentee. That is one thing that they can do irrespective of uh, at what level their mentee is and <clears throat> whatever topic they are studying. And uh, like I said, that they can also help, in, uh, help the mentee in developing the patterns, uh, helping them to see the patterns that is being followed. Uh, to, uh, in order to get to the optimal solution or in order to get to the solution. So mm -hmm. in these ways, a mentee can help, uh, a mentor can help their mentee. And uh, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that there is a lots of uh, tips and a gold mine of uh, sort of pointers that people can note down, take down notes and just make sure that your uh, timeline that Gaurav earlier mentioned of one to months initially preparing on data structures, focusing on uh, two, three months on strong practice and make sure that all these mistakes uh, you are avoiding and wherever you need help, you reach out to people, take mentorship and get your strategy right, get your execution right. So this is a top level plan that uh, Gaurav has given, but I'm sure that there are lots of viewers who might have different types of weaknesses and strengths in different areas, right? Some might be uh, lacking in trees, someone is lacking in graphs or something, some different problems, right? So if you, if uh, any of you specifically want uh, Gaurav to do, take, have a one-on-one -on -one session with you and plan out things for you uh, as to exactly where you need to improve and what, what all steps or things you should do uh, in your roadmap, uh, you can directly, check a link in the description and you can use a coupon code to uh, actually book a session with Gaurav. Uh, so yeah, Gaurav, so let's move on to the interesting final part, which a lot of people would like to know is uh, how to land even an interview opportunity, right? Like what needs to be done in uh, uh, from a resume point of view, right? Like how do you, how do you get your resume even shortlisted? Uh, so basically, uh, one thing that is there is, is to try uh, as much as possible. That's the bottom line to this. So the thing is that when I was in Samsung, so my role was more towards the network domain, as I mentioned. So my resume was also like that only that worked on this 5G technology or this 4G technology or like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was happening to me that uh, many of the times my resume was not getting so shortlisted. So the only solution that I could find for that was to try as much as possible. Try mm -hmm. to get the reference from anyone. So don't be shy. Just message uh, uh, tens of people on LinkedIn to get the referral. And uh, if you message like 20 people, at least one of them will revert back. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you will try to ask for these opportunities, you will see that there are a lot of people who are willing to help you. So mm -hmm. it, it used to happen to me that I used to think that, uh, and this people, this person is in Amazon or he's in Google, why would he be referred to me? And what is, uh, what benefit he will get from it? But uh, when I started to reaching out people on LinkedIn and other platform, so as I mentioned that while I was switching from Samsung to uh, Flipkart, uh, at that time, I had only one offer related to the uh, for that Flipkart because uh, uh, the call that I got from the Flipkart was more into that. That was more like uh, the recruiter reached out to me rather than 
I tried hard for that. Uh, mm -hmm. But after that, I was able to get multiple offers. So the difference between that time and the next time was that uh, for the next time, I tried very, uh, I tried very hard for getting the interview. So basically, first the, the first thing is to have a good resume for yourself. For example, many people don't have good projects in their resume. So mm -hmm. for that, like uh, there are many tips I can share. Uh, I should not say this, but you can simply go to GitHub and check out a lot of uh, interesting projects there and uh, try to include some of them into your resume and all. And apart from that, uh, you should try to focus on some uh, hackathons or some online coding competitions and also that you can write down in your resume that will make it look better. So in this way, you, these are some of the ways in which you can improve your resume. And once you are done with the resume part, you can start applying uh, uh, in a very hard way. Uh, what I exactly mean is try to reach out people on LinkedIn to get a referral because uh, if you're going to apply for a job on the job portal, uh, nowadays it is like uh, very rare that you will get a call from there. So mm -hmm. do apply for on the job portals also and then get a referral also. Apart from that, uh, there are many uh, there are many like uh, apps and platforms, web platforms where you can get opportunities. For example, LinkedIn, there are LinkedIn jobs. Many times people post on LinkedIn that they have job opportunities. Apart from that, there is one Insta hire, there is one Mockery.com. Personally, I would feel Mockery.com is a very underrated platform. So initially, I didn't even have a profile over there because I used to think that uh, it is something where only like uh, like data entry jobs and those kinds of jobs are available. But mm -hmm. when I uh, uploaded my profile over there, I uh, got uh, uh, I got calls from very big companies also related mm -hmm. to the software industry. So mm -hmm. make sure you have profile over there. And uh, <clears throat> so in Nokia also there is also uh, there is also like feature to apply for the job. So make sure you keep applying over there. And apart from all this, have a good connection. So for example. If you have some friends who are also looking to switch uh, and they have given some interview, you can mm -hmm. just talk to them and ask that, hey, uh, you talk to, you gave interview for that, can you share the number of that HR or the email ID of that HR? Mm -hmm. So uh, you can directly uh, call, I would not suggest call them, but definitely you can send an email to them and repeat it because it's not like you send an email today and you get a reply today, or you will get a reply so make sure that you do that quite often. So that's the only idea to get more and more interviews. And there's like no uh, other secret apart from that. You have to try really hard and find different sources from where you can apply. Like, uh, like I told different websites and apps and uh, try to get to the uh, email IDs or the contact numbers of people uh in different organization and uh, try to keep mailing them and all so that's the only way i think you can mm -hmm. get Correct. so i think i think it's basically pure hustle and yeah, uh, yeah networking and then just trying out if your resume not getting shortlisted edit it again try it out and uh network with people and don't be shy yeah so for your uh case uh, how did you how did you get a uh opportunity at google and some other top companies where you always contacted by the recruiter or uh, did you apply to jobs or how was it or was it via reference uh it was uh, a combination of all these three things for example uh for example for linkedin i would say there was a job opening on linkedin and i would say i was lucky enough so linkedin is a kind of company that uh, uh, getting an interview is uh, tougher than cracking the actual interview in LinkedIn. So you won't see many posts uh, uh, regarding I joined LinkedIn. You will see a lot of posts regarding I joined Google. But uh -huh. LinkedIn is a company that doesn't hire too much. So getting an interview is really tough. So I was lucky in that. So basically when I was switching to Flipkart at that time, there was a connection. I sent a connection request to one of the HRs that worked in the LinkedIn and I uh, I just simply messaged her on LinkedIn only that uh, I want to apply for this organization and your organization and please help me by referring there and set my resume and I didn't get any call at that time. And uh, what happened, uh, 
so i was just uh, checking out the job section in the linkedin and there there was a job related uh, uh, to the linkedin in which only few applicants had applied at that time so there were like 30 40 applicants only and i applied at that job and uh, then i remembered that there was someone in my connection uh, that i had contacted during that time so just after applying that i messaged her again that hey this is the job and she was uh, the recruiter for that job also so mm -hmm. i simply messaged her that hey please uh, i have applied for this job please try to consider me for the same and uh, luckily uh, she contacted me in the evening that uh, we'll get a test link and we'll have to complete that and all and uh, i was able to proceed through the process for the linkedin and there were some other startups from where i got the call from different uh, platforms like nokri and uh, uh, insta hire and all so mm. for those startups i got a call from there apart from that uh, one of my friend interviewed at a, a quite a popular startup which is called digit link so he shared me uh, the the email of that person who uh, who was his uh, coordinator at that time i mm. simply used his email and uh, sent mails to him uh, so you can consider it in such a way i started sending mails to him in june june 2021 and after maybe uh, uh, so i used to send him after every 10 days so i had this plan so three mails every month and in uh, i think uh, maybe september or october he eventually replied and i went ahead with the linkedin process oh sorry rippling process so that was the thing was uh, with the rippling and uh, for google uh, i got a referral from someone uh, uh, in the month of like uh, uh, i would say february so mm. this is an interesting thing that i got a referral from someone and that referral i also got by simply messaging people on linkedin that hey please refer me at google so mm. i messaged that person on uh, linkedin and he referred me during february only in that uh, 21 february 21 and i got uh, a call from google but that role was not uh, uh, the one that i was looking that was more towards web solutions engineer so i was looking more towards the software engineer so i kind of declined that uh, and after that i got a call again from the recruiter in the month of uh, i think in november so the run was done in february and the call came in november okay. and that was the role for the software engineer only and the mm. went on and everything mm. uh, went. So as you can see that, uh, uh, and for the Microsoft also, uh, I had the uh, email and contact of the HR from one of my friends who used to give, who appeared for the Microsoft interview. So you can see that uh, I got a call from uh, all of those methods that I described, uh, emailing someone from getting, getting their IDs from friend, and uh, messaging on LinkedIn and getting a referral. So I got uh, uh, some, like I got at least one interview from each of those methods. So I'm pretty sure that if anyone tries with those methods, they can also get interviews. Right. Uh, listening to all your uh, stories, I'm like now quite intrigued as to how much you can achieve just by sort of just staying at it and by simply by cold outreach right yeah, yeah i think we will have to create a video on your outreach framework what emails are you <laughs> writing and how are you achieving that yeah so uh Gaurav, that was quite insightful so any final tips that you would like to give to all the people who are watching this uh in terms of uh, who are in the stage of their upcoming interviews or are in stage of preparing uh, for their top interview company interviews. So, yeah, do you have any final tips that you want to give? Uh, as such, I don't have any magic tip or final tip like that. Yeah. Just I would say work hard and uh, this one thing I would say is like don't give up. So, for example, just to give a short uh, uh, context when i was in uh, samsung uh, my resume didn't get selected in many of the companies so and even at that time i failed some of the interviews also for example i tried for amazon two times uh, and i kind of fulfilled both both the times uh, one thing so but 
currently i am in google so if you will compare the amazon interviews are much easier than the google so one thing i would say is that you just keep preparing keep working hard and just never give up give up that that's that's great yeah so for for all the people who are watching this video if you if you would like to directly have one on one mentorship with gorav and uh, want him to sort of hand hold you and guide you and throughout the entire interview preparation journey you can directly check out his profile you can also directly book uh, mentorship programs with him so gorav is someone who is uh who will be behind you is super motivated and will keep you motivated to work hard and get the goal that you want for so yeah that's a message if any one of you go check out the link in the description below so that's great thanks a lot uh, goro for all the time also taking out time on a uh, sunday uh, really appreciate all the knowledge that you have shared with everyone it would be very helpful for all the people who watch this video thanks a lot yeah thanks i thanks for having me here great wait see you then goro yeah bye, bye.